Hi everyone and um, welcome to today's webinar on preparing for peak success. My name's Camilla and I'm the content marketing manager at Fresh Relevance. Uh, my role involves a lot of researching, writing and talking about e-commerce. And I'm joined today by Tom from Think Tribe. Um, Tom, could you introduce yourself to everyone, please? Yes, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Tom Chaloner, uh, Strategic Account and Partnerships Manager at Think Tribe. Um, I look after uh, not just the Partners Channel, but also account managing some of our strategic accounts um, for the past six years. So, hope to be able to bring some real experience in the performance testing uh, world to your peak preparation. Thanks so much, Tom. We're really happy to have you here with us today. Thank you. We will have time for questions at the end. So if you do have any questions throughout the presentation, you can just pop them in the questions box that you should see on the right hand side of your screen. So before we get started, I just quickly wanted to talk about who we are. Fresh Relevance is a versatile decision and personalization platform for commerce driven businesses. The platform gives you the power to maximize customer experience, conversion and loyalty. It offers an incredibly wide range of personalization tools and integrates with all the elements of your existing tech stack. It also tests and automates decisions for you so that the right content is always put in front of the right customer. The platform gathers data wherever customers go, then brings it all together in one place with existing data, showing real-time behavior and insight combined with the power to act on it. Our product features include cross-channel personalization, dynamic images, product recommendations, data capture popovers, triggered emails, geotargeting, social proof, and the list goes on. Ultimately, we help digital marketers achieve their goal of boosting customer loyalty and revenue by creating an optimized journey across all channels and devices. And on average, our customers see 25% of their online sales influenced by fresh relevance. We're trusted by hundreds of leading digital businesses across retail, publishing and travel. Hopefully you see some familiar logos there. Um, we're joined today obviously by Think Tribe, who are an award-winning, fully managed performance testing, helping ensure fast and error-free customer journeys and delivering revenue at the most critical times. So onto the good stuff, preparing for peak seats and success. In recent years, Black Friday marketing has reliably delivered additional traffic and sales, but the pandemic has obviously caused a dramatic shift in consumer behavior. So it's no surprise that the e-commerce traffic for Black Friday last year looked a little different. Web data from our own clients once again showed peaks on Black Friday and Cyber Monday, but the pattern last year was different to previous years. In previous years, we saw traffic building through Black Friday week uh, with three peak days of Thanksgiving Thursday, Black Friday and Cyber Monday, and then remaining at about 120% through Cyber Week and towards Christmas. Well, last year we saw smaller peaks. So Thanksgiving Thursday was completely gone. Black Friday was at 173% and Cyber Monday was only 142%. Significantly, Cyber Week was gone too. So that whole week, including Cyber Monday, averaged 103%, which was slightly lower than the week before Black Friday week. The bottom line is that it's still an unprecedented time. And if marketing was ever a fire and forget process, it certainly isn't today. So you'll need tools and tactics in place that allow you to maximize your performance and adapt quickly to changing consumer behavior. So with that in mind, I'm going to talk you through eight practical tactics that you can implement now in time for peak season. So the first tactic is dynamic hero banners. You can really fill your shoppers with festive cheer as soon as they open your email with a holiday themed hero banner and you can delight them even further by adding personalization. So in this example, Animed Direct uses a dynamic hero banner for their Christmas launch email. The company collects zero party data, which in this case was the name of the customer's pet, and they pulled in this data into the dynamic banner to make the email extra memorable and attention grabbing. So you can see the name Aiden on the Santa hat there, which would really grab, grab each customer's attention. The second tactic is dynamic pricing. 
So Christmas sales and discounts obviously means that prices are a lot more fluid during this period. So it's important to deliver the most up-to-date pricing to your shoppers to avoid frustration and lost sales. FFX uses dynamic pricing in their email marketing. So they serve customers live pricing at the time of opening the email. Tactic number three, countdown timers. This is a really great way to create urgency and build excitement around festive sales. And they're proven to increase voucher redemption by up to 15%. Here we have an example from Biogif. They included a countdown timer in their marketing email to highlight their one day only festive sale. And in this example, Oak Furniture Land used a countdown timer in their data capture popover to build excitement and encourage signups to their Black Friday discount alerts. Which brings us on to tactic number five, discount codes. What better way to show thanks to your customers than with a coupon? Not only will your customers feel appreciated, they'll be more likely to treat themselves to a purchase. It's important though, to make sure that your coupon is dynamic so that any customer who opens your email after the discount has expired will see coupon expired text rather than an out of date coupon which obviously isn't a very good customer experience. You should also make sure that your coupon follows shoppers from your marketing emails to your website and vice versa to increase exposure and redemption rate. In this example, Iconic Lights displays a dynamic banner to new visitors to their site, offering a discount on their first order when they sign up. This has two purposes. The visitor identifies themselves with their email address and they're tempted to make a purchase. So it's really a win-win. And this is a fun example from Bose. They made a really nice interactive scratch card discount code um, in their marketing email. And the sixth tactic is product recommendations. So when it comes to online shopping, choice paralysis can be a real problem. With so many options and so little time, shoppers can be left feeling overwhelmed and unsure about their festive purchases. That's where product recommendations come in. By including personalized recommendations and gift guides in your email marketing, you can save shoppers time and help them pick out the perfect gifts to put under the tree. So Viavet here uses conversion boosting social proof in their marketing emails to recommend their popular products. By displaying popularity messaging and star ratings here as well, they signal to customers that these are really trustworthy products worth adding to their Christmas shopping lists. Not all shoppers have the same spending power and your shoppers might be less inclined to click through to your website if they see products outside of their price range. By recommending products in different price categories, Karen Millen gives their shoppers options that suit each budget. This tactic is also effective when used on your website. So for returning customers, you can use behavioral data to suggest products within the shoppers most browse and purchase price range. And for new visitors, you can use tools such as our price affinity predictor to recommend products in the price level most likely to convert that individual shopper. Tactic number seven, triggered emails. So with deals coming at them left, right and center, Black Friday shoppers can find themselves hopping between multiple websites and devices to secure the best deals. For shoppers who might have got distracted and switched to another website before completing a purchase from your store, you can win them back with cart and browse recovery emails. Z & Co sends cart abandoners an email with details of the carted items and a reminder of their black tag event. Another type of triggered email worth adding to your Black Friday toolkit is price drop alerts. You can use these emails to let everyone who has shown interest in the product know that it has just got cheaper. And sales uplifts for these types of emails average 3%, so it's really a Black Friday essential. In this example, Columbia alerts shoppers who have browsed a particular shirt that this product is now available at a lower price. They use prominent product imagery to remind shoppers of the item and they entice them with their fun, reveal new price call to action. So the penultimate tactic, social proof. In marketing, authenticity really goes a long way. So using real people in your campaigns can build trust and resonate with your shoppers and also reduce return rates. When festive celebrations come around, customers aren't necessarily in the mood for shopping. 
So why not provide alternative ways to interact with your business? Email is a powerful tool to provide inspiration and turn customers into brand advocates. Killstar adds user-generated content to their Christmas marketing emails to show shoppers what their products look like in real life. One in three shoppers actually prefer to see a product as it's worn or used by real people as opposed to professional product images. So it really pays to use this social proof tactic. This email from Karen Millen invites customers to share their festive photos of the brand's clothing. This not only helps generate social proof content, but it also encourages shoppers to follow the company on Instagram. And we've made it to the final tactic, fulfillment options. So when asked about their festive shopping top priorities, 41% of consumers said free shipping was the most important factor for them. And 35% said fast delivery and 24% said clear and simple returns policies. So if you do have attractive fulfillment options such as these, make sure you shout about them in your marketing emails. Shoe Zone dedicates a whole email to highlighting their free next day delivery option. And Homebase makes their click and collect options really clear in their marketing emails so the customers know exactly how to take advantage of this alternative to home delivery. The click and collect market in the UK is actually forecast to re reach 9.6 billion in 2022, accounting for 13.9 of online sales. So if you do offer this option, make sure your customers know about it. So some action points to take away. The continuing surge in online demand and desire for discounts means there are still plenty of opportunities to boost your sales this Black Friday. But with steep competition and high customer expectations, the need to provide a simple and smooth experience has never been more important. Here are three guiding principles to help you succeed during this peak season. So firstly, use real-time data to power your marketing. This is so important in Black Friday because stock moves fast so powering your marketing tactics with real-time data is vital to avoid disappointing shoppers. Secondly, relevance is everything. The marketing and e-commerce tactics need to be tailored to the individual to give them the best possible experience. And thirdly, it's so important to provide a smooth and convenient customer experience across all channels to make it as nice as possible for customers when shopping with you. And now I'm gonna pass over to Tom, who's gonna to tell us more about improving your online performance. Thanks, Camilla. I'm just going to share my screen very quickly. Okay, so um, thank you for inviting us along today uh, to be able to share some of our experience and knowledge in the preparation for Black Friday. Um, and not just Black Friday, this also appears, uh, appeals to any peak of which you may be going into as a business. So I think maybe to put this into context, um, really to explain a bit about what we do and who we work with, um, we work with a lot of very uh, high-end retailers, people like Ted Baker, Ralph Lauren, LK Bennett, Dixon's Carphone, Bowden, uh, Fitflop, Ted Baker, and to help them provide their customers with a fast and error-free website experience during peak through a couple of our managed services. And I think it's fair to say, you know, if you as a consumer have shopped online during Black Friday. If you as a consumer have shopped online, probably in general, you will have been on one of our um, customers' websites and you will have had a good customer experience because the bottom line is we are the prominent supplier in this area. So peak traffic, let's focus on Black Friday because Black Friday or, or really any peak provides you as a retailer with a golden opportunity to gain new customers, to introduce them to your brand and to increase revenue. And I said, it's not just Black Friday, it's other seasonal peaks. If we're talking about holidays, it may be January, or if we can still go on holiday in the future abroad, it's um, if you may be a, you know, a, a florist or a chocolatier, we may be looking at Mother's Day or Valentine's Day. 
And it's, it's these seasonal peaks, both known and unknown, because we've all seen the, the rise of social influences. We've all seen uh, people like Kate Middleton uh, in a new dress, for example, or anything like that, driving really large amounts of traffic to our websites. And to be honest, these unknown peaks can be a massive problem because we're just not ready for them. We don't know whether the infrastructure is in place. We don't know what there's, there's so many unknowns and we need to make sure that you can take uh, the opportunity, grasp it with both hands to make sure that we can maximize revenue during those sorts of things. So testing shouldn't just be seen as testing for peak load testing or capacity testing. Testing needs to be a continuous thing throughout the year to make sure we can deal with these, um, these spikes and peaks. So the question I ask you all today is, how are you ensuring that your customers are experiencing a fast and error-free journey during peak? Because you might be ready for Black Friday, with all your campaigns and tactics and, and personalization in, in place, but your site might not be. So what do I actually mean by your site might not be ready? Well, you, you need to make sure your product is actually viable. Somebody can come to your site, can browse, can search, and can ultimately check out and purchase uh, during high traffic periods. We talk about customers can access your site on any device. And we know there's a, a change in, in the way things are working with the rise in mobile, the rise in people accessing through the app channel or, or still on desktop. And we need to make sure the experience for those different devices is the same and the performance is exactly the same for each one. And we need to make sure that features and functionality on the site from personalization, payments, or analytics tools, you know, the tools which, which you're using to be able to, to monitor these sorts of things are working and as they should be. And of course, there are a multitude of other reasons why um, your website may not also uh, work during this period. It may be that there's things to do with um, the, the hosting of the site. Uh, we've, we've all seen uh, fairly recently a, a major host that go down and impact websites. It may be a configuration on the servers. I, I don't want to get into the technical side of things today, more of the practical side of the way that we can deal with these things. And for this, load testing is one part of the, the solution to make sure that we can handle this, this big volume of traffic. But we know that most of our very successful retail customers don't just test frequently, but do that in um, conjunction with a, our managed uh, monitoring service. So the load testing, we talk about uh, testing at scale. Can we deal with these peaks? And the monitoring, we start talking about, well, actually, what does our website look like through the eyes of our customers, not from the technical back end? How are our customers interacting with the website and can they actually check out? And the most important thing is what is stopping the customer from purchasing our products and how can we identify and fix that problem? So, um, I think it's fair to say as well, you know, we all want our customer to have a rich user experience. And we all want them to have the best functionality. We all want them to you know, give them the most options available. Um, and this, to be honest, is what they as a customer have come to expect. And they expect this, if they've been shopping on one of your competitors' websites, they certainly expect this from your website. But another question for you is, well, what are you doing day to day to handle the impact of any of those changes through things like third parties or payments or, or basket or search and much? What are you doing to minimize the risk of poor performance in those areas? Because we're talking about more choice. We're talking about more channels. We're talking about more devices. And with each of these changes in complexity, we talk about the introduction of more risk. Of, of things not working, more potential points of failure, and worryingly, more things out of your own control. So I'm just gonna give you a, a few seconds to read um, a couple of stats that we've put up on the screen. Um, you know, some quite serious numbers we're talking about here. 
and it may be sort of news to you and to me in, in some ways as well. But you know, another stat we can talk about is in the future of customer experience reports. Uh, PwC surveyed 15,000 uh, consumers, you know, a, a good sample number, and found that one in three will leave a brand they love, not, not just they like, not they just want to buy off, a brand that they love after one bad experience. While well, 92% would completely abandon a company after two or three negative interactions, these are lost sales th that you can avoid. Um, by by planning properly for peak and minimising some of these um, negative user experiences. Um, some more slightly worrying statistics in some ways, and I do apologise, I hold my hands up, this data is from 2017, but we have to assume it's the same today in 2021, and probably it's going to be very much the same in 2025, but People talk a lot about um, page load speeds, and people talk a lot about the home page in particular. You, know, you may call it a hero page, but we know the home page isn't just this, the page that people land on. And um, we have a lot of traffic through campaigns such as emails or any other channels that's getting people to land on the PDPs and the PLPs. We need to look at web performance not just in the performance of a single page, but in the end-to-end -end customer journey, the way they use your website, the way they, where they land, how they interact, are they searching, are they using categories, um, you know, are they using a wish list, for example, and make sure we actually have eyes, have a view on every single step of their user journey. Because, you know, how long is your customer willing to wait? And we can see some, um, some really scary page load time bounce rates here, but, we need to think about this as well. It's not just desktop. What do these figures look like on mobile? What do these figures look like in the app itself? Because to be realistic, all of these times and all of these figures are ex exacerbated when we put them under load from traffic. And I want you to consider the fallouts of, of poor performance. You know, you prepare for peak, but your infrastructure or your third parties let that preparation down. You know, you, you, you've spent your budget on driving traffic to the site, but they're unable to transact. There's increased pressure on your customer services team to answer disgruntled customers. Um, and, and worst case, the business has failed to achieve its target due to issues on your website. And, you know, I think personally, um, I, during peak periods, I spend a bit of time on Twitter. Um, as you know, Twitter's where people feel like they can say anything, uh, particularly about um, websites and poor website performance and um, the couple I've picked out here they're actually quite nice compared to some things that we've seen but it can be uh, and is very very damaging to your brand you know we, we say what is the cost of poor website performance well damage to your brand has got to be right up there um, something we can't quantify sometimes in terms of revenue and um, revenue being you know up there too um we all realise we're not, you know, the Dixon's car phones, the Ted Bakers of this world. Um, but but let me assure you that you know if it can happen to them, it can happen to you too. Um, you know, we, we see quite often the likes of John Lewis, uh, Argos, you know, big brands really struggling with with the traffic that they actually get on the website. And you know, it's it's learning from these um, sort of oh, what maybe call them mistakes, learning from what the big guys are doing in some respects to see whether you can do similar. So really, you know, do you think you're ready, ready or not? You know, because if you're being told by your infrastructure team that you are ready, then may actually, you know, you may be ready or they may be ready, but there are things that may not have been considered. Some of the things that we've just been talking about. So really, where do we come into this? Well, you know, I, I maybe should refer to ourselves as performance experts because by working with these brands, um, we have a, a lot of experience in offering real-time data on, on how, where the problems are, what is causing the problems or the bottlenecks, and actually giving you the data that you need to fix where these problems are. In terms of being ready for peak, we talk about um, performance testing, 
it's a managed service. You don't need to do these sorts of things yourselves. We realize you know, that in e-commerce and, and marketing and some IT teams are quite small. Well, we provide the resource to, to run this in conjunction with you, a collaborative approach. I think you know, it's really nice to hear our clients say, well, we treat you as a member of our team. You know, we rely on you, you're our performance experts. We ask you the questions and, and you help provide the answers. The other side of that is, is what we've touched on as well, is the performance monitoring. Having eyes on re your website real time, 24 by seven, identifying genuine customer impacting problems that are going to affect things like um, conversion rates, what's causing those problems, and providing the right people with the right information to fix that problem. And it, it comes back to that, being an expert resource, being a, a partner that you can lean on and rely on and to help work, not just ahead of peak, but as an ongoing basis, really putting performance uh, of your website front and center of um, you know, the development cycle. So really my three peak preparation tips, there could have been lots of P's in that, is when you load test, load test in a collaborative manner. Speak to the, the infrastructure team, speak to the guys in IT, make sure that there's complete alignment on what you're doing, and you're doing it in the most realistic way possible. Not just testing single pages, but testing as a customer would uh, interact with your website on an end-to-end -end customer journey basis. My second tip is pull in live data during these periods, you know, it's, it's great. You can retrospectively say, oh, I know we've, we've had a problem there, but, but by having this live data through the eyes of your customer, you can identify, you know, hopefully not just during peak, but before peak where these improvements can be made. And finally, be, be proactive, don't, don't be reactive, make sure that you have a plan, make sure that you, you know, take action well in advance and, and don't rely on other people to make sure that your website has got good performance. Be part of that solution. Um, quite often we see these tests done in isolation and it can't operate like that. It has to operate on a collaborative basis. Um, I'll leave my details on the screen for a little bit. Um, I'm more than happy any questions either in the chat at the moment or, or post um, this discussion, please reach out to me uh, or any of my team. We're quite happy to give advice impartially um, and if there's anything that we can do to help you, uh, we're here as that performance partner. Thanks very much, Tom. Um, I'm just going to share my screen again. Yeah, it's so interesting. And I think, um, as you said, you can have all the best tactics in the world. You know, you can have all your personalization, but if your website isn't performing well, you're not really going to be reaping the benefits of that. And um, obviously, Black Friday is a massive peak time. So now is really the time to start preparing um, to make sure that your website is the best it can be. So if you're interested in seeing more, um, learning more and being inspired by more experience, uh, more examples from um, other brands and retailers, you can check out our ultimate e-commerce CRO lookbook, uh, which is available um, at that link. And I think um, it's also been posted in the chat there. That's available on our website now. Um, so again, thank you very much for tuning in. And um, I hope that you've got something valuable from this session and that you're feeling inspired to um, start preparing for peak now. So these are my contact details. And um, as Tom said, I'm also open for any questions um, that you might have after the talk. If you want to email me, I'm also on LinkedIn as well. And then again, um, Tom's details there as well. So I think we do have time for some questions now, which is always good. Um, I'm going to start with a question that we got in for you, Tom. Um, you mentioned that some of your clients use both load testing and monitoring. Uh, what benefits does this bring them? I think there's a multitude because you know, we, we touched on this previously. It's having this 
total view of your website. It's knowing, you know, I mentioned a few times, it's, it's all about de-risking the, the, the chance of poor performance. Um, the, the monitoring side of things means that the clients can identify quickly on releases any genuine customer impacting problems. Um, we know that a, a problem may be sporadic. It's about identifying and reducing those sporadic types of problems. And we can use the knowledge that we gain through the monitoring service to help influence the types of behavior that we, we do in a load test. So the load test will say your, your website can handle. It, I think an analogy would be, well, we know how big a store is. We know how many people we can get in the door. We know how many people can take things off shelves and put in a basket and, and go through the checkout. But, but what is, where's a bottleneck in that? So the load testing is identifying the bottleneck and the monitoring is identifying sporadic problems like um, you know, out of stock items that shouldn't be listed, like failures with a payment provider in real time. And it's that holistic overview of, of everything that they do, which really brings a, a benefit as opposed to just using a single um, one of those services. Mm, mm, that's really interesting. I like the analogy. That's a good way of thinking about it. <laughs> Um, and then there's a question here, um, which has come in for me. Do you have any advice for keeping customers happy if and when products go out of stock during Black Friday? Um, so this is a really good question because obviously um, it's an extremely frustrating experience for customers. And Black Friday, you know, there's there's more demand. Things are more likely to go out of stock. Um, so one way to kind of turn this experience around and make it slightly better is displaying the date an out of stock product will become available again. So if you display this on your category pages and product pages, it just makes everything really transparent and it just helps the customer uh, make a purchase decision. And then another really great tool is uh, we talked about triggered emails earlier. Well, back in stock emails are just a great type of triggered email. Um, so that's when you alert shoppers who have browsed a particular product that was out of stock, uh, you alert them automatically when it comes back in stock. And it's just a great way to provide um, really useful information to customers at the time that they're most likely to convert. Um, and then geotargeting tactics could also be useful here because you know stores are obviously opening up again. Um, so it's gonna be slightly different to last year. So you could use uh, geotargeting to maybe display um, in-store availability um, and maybe like nearest store to the, to the shopper which would be useful. Um, and then we have another question for you, Tom. Um, can you give me an idea of how long it would take to bring a new customer live on both services? Oh, okay. Um, I, I think the, the, the headline here maybe is, you still have time before Black Friday. Um, it's, um, I think for both services, conservatively, you know, unless there's anything extraordinary, which we don't know about, there's maybe six to eight weeks, um, which would enable a, a good bedding in period too, would give you that safety net that everything would be working ahead of peak. Um, again, it depends on the complexity. You know, if, if we're talking about the Amazons of this world, when you know, we'd have to stretch that out somewhat. But for a a you know a mid mid to upper tier uh, retailer, six to eight weeks, both services would give you um, that peace of mind that you are ready for Black Friday, and on an ongoing basis would have eyes on your website. Um, it's it's a question we get asked a lot because um, you know it's people think there's a lot of technical change that needs to happen to get things in place. It, it's not. It's it's all light touch. Um, it's all managed. It's just making sure that we can get you know, the traffic onto the sites to see what's going on. Um, everything else is done by our tech teams. Um, the, the hardest bit sometimes is just getting um, whitelisted for, for IP addresses. Everything else is, is managed by ourselves. So yeah, six to eight weeks, there's still time. Great. Um, and then we have another question. How are you anticipating Black Friday traffic this year compared to 2020? Uh, I don't know if you have any thoughts on that, Tom. It's, we all talk about the, the rise in Black Friday traffic. and I, I don't know when it's going to stop. Um, I, I can see this year, you know, last year was a, a massive unknown and we saw an increase. Um, this year, we have to say it is still a, a, an unknown, but I'm going to go out there and say we are going to see higher traffic levels. You know, we had clients last year saying, well, we're going to go 70% higher. No, actually, wait, we're going to go, no, wait, 120% higher than we, we have done before. 
and this year will be bigger. We're still, you know, nervous. There's some level of nerves about still going out. More people are used to, to shopping online, mm. different demographics. Yeah different devices so yeah we're still we're still on that upwards trajectory in terms of traffic levels yeah I think it's an interesting one um because last year obviously there was a huge surge in online shopping and there were loads of novice online shoppers who hadn't shopped online before but I mean this year potentially there's going to be less novice shoppers so more people are used to shopping online so yeah maybe maybe we'll see more demand um but then also thrown into the mix is the fact that stores are reopened so yeah, I think it's it's difficult to predict, but hopefully, hopefully we'll see an increase. Um, and I think those are all the questions. We also had another question that asked, uh, will there be a recording of this sent afterwards? And um, yes, this will be available to watch on demand. So if you want to watch it back or if you want to send it to any of your colleagues who might have missed it, um, that will definitely be available for you. So um, unless there are any other questions, um, if you do have any other questions, feel free to pop them in now. Um, but yes, thank you very much for joining us. We're finishing slightly earlier today, so you can uh, go and have your lunch or uh, take a walk around the park, whatever you do in your lunch break. Um, yes, and thank you, thank you very much for joining us and feel free to send us any questions that you might have afterwards that you might want to ask um, separately.